There are many reasons one might call him a god of television. Creator and writer of all of your favorite 44 man comedies and dramas, Mr. Kelly has lived the American dream 90s style. Married to Michelle Pfeiffer, Catwoman herself, David has truly had a rock and rollin' career. He is, in every meaning of the word, a TV warrior. But what would make David give up the sweet life so easily? Oh, it's a long story. No, I'm not a TV warrior anymore. <laughs> Suppose it all started back when David was just a little kid in high school. David. Hey guys, what you got there, TV? Ah, hey, hey, whoa, it's just a script, man. Hey, oh, why did we look at it? Oh, hey guys, stop, please. <laughs> Season so one, episode oh. one. Dookie script. It's not a script for the first day. The problem day. is Dookie Hauser is a middle-aged man who deals with his usual problems. His girlfriend ah. loves him. He's a smash at parties, and he's a lawyer. But he's ah, ah, God, no. Oh, brilliant, Dookie. Yeah, great. Come on, Shut fellas. Up. Let's say ah. TV. Mr. Hauser alone. You're a joke, Kelly. Go do something that doesn't suck for a change. Do you, okay, do you. Hey, David. Lost the page. Oh, hi, Steve Bosco. You're not gonna make fun of me too, are you? Absolutely not. I thought those guys were so out of line. You got a dream, David. I should know. I'm writing a few shows as we speak, including NYPD Blue, Hooperman, A Modern Twilight Zone, just to name a few. Let's see what you got here. Big pile of papers, wrinkly and rippy. Oh, police. Shut up. Doogie Hauser, the tale of a time-traveling lawyer. Well, don't know about the time-traveling lawyer thing, but Doogie Hauser. Cool, go ahead. Love to co-create it with you. What do you say, pal? Want to go into the business together? Well, gee, Stephen Bosco, I didn't realize you wanted to be a TV warrior just like me. TV warrior? TV warriors. I see the two of us together in the stars on the marquee. David E. Kelly and Stephen Boschko, with John Ritter playing Detective Harry Hooperman. Hooperman? That's totally awesome! All right, from here on out, it's Hooperman and Doogie Howser. Best pals that were canceled. Now get your butt in that school and hit the books! And remember, David E., nothing's more important than a dream. But where do I start? Alan and Bill, buddy. Remember that name? Alan and Bill. So, Samuel Gompers began the AFL, which stands for what? Julie? The African Football League? Very good, Julie. And in time, there was a catastrophe at a woman's factory, changing standards for workers. And what was that catastrophe? Timothy. All the ladies misplaced their deodorant? Very good, Timothy. And in time, the African Football League and the women's movement collaborated in what? <laughs> Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly. David E. Stephen Falls. Wrong answer. Dunce. Now, what have you been doing that is so much more interesting than the African Football Movement? Hmm. I'm. Just, it's just nothing, really. It's just a season one of Chicago Hope. Written by David E. Kelly, TV warrior. In collaboration with Stephen Boschko, his appearance is by one Cooperman. This is hardly historical, Mr. Kelly. I'm sorry, it's just... What? Since you think I'm so boring, perhaps you, Mr. Cooperman, and his zany cast of characters can give us a few laughs. Go on, read it to the entire class. Uh, <clears throat> Chicago Hope is a television medical drama in a sitcom style? Ew, a stinky scream! <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you're satisfied for poisoning the minds of my students? Now go. You're not a TV star. You're not a TV writer. And you are certainly not a TV warrior. Now sit down! No! Oh, do you get there, do you? You know what? I've had enough of this. I will be a TV warrior, and I do believe in fairies. Okay. Stephen Bosco believed in me, and now I believe in myself. You gotta dream a little. My friend taught me that. But it doesn't matter anymore, because Stephen Bosco's dead. Stephen Bosco died? 
I'll show you. I'll show you all. I swear to God, heaven and hell, I will be a TV warrior. I will be a TV warrior. I will be a TV warrior. I swear to God. He'll be a movie don't crap if he keeps that up. <laughs> now, where were we? The liberation of the Women's League from the Pirate Federation. Well, poor young David tried. And he tried and he cried. And he cried. And he tried. And he fraught. <laughs> I wrote the line on my hand with Sharpie and smudged. He cried and tried and cried, but hard work and persistence took him through the darkest times in his life. Stephen Bochco, dead. Scripts suck. Yeah, you know they suck. <laughs> what more could one do than resort to asking the dark one? Well, I'd sell my soul to Satan for a good script. Doogie Hauser. Doogie Hauser becomes. I hate it when people hit dogs and leave them in the street like this. That's no dog talking. I think that's Tim Hunter, creator of Beverly Hills 90210. And that was a great program, but it was definitely wrongly dismissed as a guilty pleasure for teeny boppers. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute, yeah. I don't think that's a dog or Tim Hunter. That's Aaron Spelling, executive producer of Melrose Place. Kyle McBride was dreaming. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, he's got a script on him, that should say. Doogie Hauser? This is David E. Kelly. Was it a script about a time traveling lawyer or something? Um, well, that's, that's what I thought, but it says here Doogie Hauser, MD, is a story about a teenage boy who deals with usual problems. His girlfriend loves him when he smashes at parties, and he works at a local residency facility. That's stupid, right? It doesn't sound stupid. If I didn't know any better, I'd say it was pretty awesome. Yeah, you know, it kind of makes me want to. Tune in. Ah, ah, Pisces and Magellan, Dashi and Spielberg. Oh God. You guys, what are you doing with my script that's mine? Now look what you did. Ah, hey, what are you doing? Why are you trying to help me? You're trying to mess this up again for everyone? We never, David, we never liked you. We thought everything you did was awful, but this, this is frightening. You like it? Yeah, the first draft was terrible. But these revisions, wow, what a concept. We'll do anything for you, just get him on the air. <laughs> what are you trying to say, guys? I think what Bully One here is trying to say is the TV warrior in you has emerged. Yes. Yes! Ha! I'm unstoppable. ABC, NBC, Fox, and the WB. I guess. Lock up your daughters, America, because I'm David E. Kelly, TV warrior. So with all those revisions, Doogie Howser, MD, was indeed picked up. Dad, I ain't a child anymore. I'm a licensed physician. And uh, then LA Law, Michael. I'm not a child anymore. I'm a licensed attorney. <laughs> and of course, Chicago Hope. Dr. Austin, I'm not a child anymore. I'm a grown-up Doogie Howser. Uh, that's some interesting and original programming, eh, folks? <laughs> eh, folks? <laughs> but meanwhile, Behind the poop tube, there was some interesting stuff going on. Ah, yes. Michelle Pfeiffer. David E. David E. Michelle. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah.
quite frankly, if it isn't, I'm afraid to see what is. But uh, the best was yet to come, folks. Pay attention. Who's Catwoman? Come on, who's Catwoman? You are. That's right. You're Catwoman, so screw Lee Merriweather. Hello, Mr. Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch would like to schedule a meeting. 20 century Fox. Well, I'm sorry, Hockey, but protecting Gotham City is a big responsibility. Down. 20th floor, please. Yes, sir, buddy. Just get me up there, huh, pal? <laughs> That's so funny, huh? <laughs> what are you laughing at? You know, being a TV warrior doesn't make your farts smell like daisies. Doogie. No. It just can't be. It can't be. You died in that, uh, that thing. Well, actually, I didn't die at all. I became a cocaine addict and an elevator operator as part of my 12-step program. What? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Stephen Bosco, what about all your talk about success and dreaming? All my success is thanks to you, Stephen Bosco. I still think you should dream. It's just a lot easier to dream stoned off your rocker is all I'm saying. <laughs> Stephen Bosco, what in the world happened to you? Just remember, buddy, narcotics are the answer. <laughs> Just keep on that street sugar, and there's no telling what can happen to you. Just watch out for Tito, who sells you a bogus batch for 20 large. Gets you in a 12-step program. <laughs> Gee, Stephen Bosco, you know, I used to look up to you, but all my success has been through keeping clean and working hard, kids. <laughs> You think you did this all by yourself? Now what's that supposed to be? You think you did this all by yourself? Of course they did it all by myself. What are you talking about? Well, you're looking for Rupert Murdoch, right? Yes. It's room number 666 at the end of the hall. Don't fear the Reaper, buddy. 420. I gotta get out of here. Wow. I don't like Stephen Bosco anymore. I wish he was dead. Oh. Okay, have a seat, David. Uh, okay. What is this? It's uh, my notes. You call this professional? <laughs> All brilliant men are sloppy. Come on. Okay, shut up. Now listen. Uh, I called you in my office today to talk to you about some very important stuff. Okay. All right. I've got a little question for you. I need you to help News Corporation Limited, my company that I own. And Fox, uh, 20th Century Fox, I have a little bind, okay? You writing this down? Yes. All right, good. Okay, what's going on? Well, we've got a wonderful season lineup this evening, okay? We've got The Simpsons, mm -hmm. that's great. We've got uh, Martin, I love that Martin. We've got some uh, reality shows. Uh, who wants to be rich? Who wants to be married? Who wants to be rich and married? That's great. <laughs> Shut up, don't. Only, spoke, only speak when you're spoken to, okay? Okay. Now, um, I have a pop quiz for you. I hope you studied. <laughs> Whoa! What would I need you for when I have all of that? I, I don't know, sir. I don't know. What? I said I don't know. Bzz, sorry, wrong answer. Listen, <laughs> what I need from you is a 44-minute comedy drama, okay? One of those little formulaic things that they have in every station. I need one of those, okay? We've got uh, Calista Flockhart on hand. Mm -hmm. You can use her, that's fine. She's looking for work. But I really need you to get that out by this weekend. All right. right. Did you spell Flockhart right? Yes, yes. I don't want the wrong actress. All right. You, you're... All right, good. Now, uh, if you can bang that out by Thursday, that'd be perfect. Yeah, but we have no contract, sir. David, get out of the bubble, okay? I need open-minded people here. Not little closed-minded dummies, okay? So, I've heard you mention Ally McBeal for years. What is that? What is Ally McBeal? I never really thought about it, sir. David, All I have David! Is... Think about it. <sighs> Ally McBeal and Billy Thomas remained steady throughout their childhood. Ally even followed Billy to Harvard Law School despite having no interest in law. But when Billy chose to pursue a career in law away from Ally, their relationship came to an abrupt end. 
That's right, David. Whoa. Now, uh, how did I get over there? Shut up and, and have a seat before you fall down. Now you got some homework, okay, big fella? You gotta get all your stuff. Good boy, there you go. Now I need that popped out by Thursday, like I said, on my desk, Thursday morning. Okay? okay? okay get that done. All right. Hey, before you leave, remember, you didn't earn all your success on your own. That Armani suit on your back, it's all thanks to me, okay? Remember that, you owe me big time. All right, cool David, thank you. Cool David, thank you. <laughs> Allie McBeal flew off the press in less than a week. The pilot was shot in a day. Season one was complete in a month, isn't that something? America was eating it up with a side of David E. Kelly, TV warrior. But uh, David E. wasn't as happy. David, you've been playing with that spaghetti for an hour now. What's wrong? Nothing. David, I know you better than that. After all, I did marry you because I love you. And not just because we're both famous. <laughs> I said it was nothing, all right? Would you please just lay off me? David, I might be wearing a mask, but I can see there's a problem, and I can listen. All right. It's just, it's just what some of the guys have been saying at work lately. It's nothing. What did they say? Please don't do this, Michelle. Not now. What did they say, mister? Well, they said... They said I didn't earn everything I own today. Who said that? Well... Well, first it was Stephen Botchko in the elevator, and he's on drugs now, and then it was Rupert Murdoch. He told me I better do I McBeal, and then I'm worthless, and then... <laughs> hey, hey now. There's no need for the sniffle sniffles. How could that be true? You aren't everything yourself. You're a big TV star, right? Who's my big TV man? I am. <laughs> it's just... You know, everything really has changed ever since I got struck by lightning way back in high school. I mean, I've always wanted this, but it's like people are really starting to freak me out. I mean, it's like God's been spiting me or something. Honey, you know we don't believe in God. We're richer than he is. Meow. Yeah. And you're starting to freak me out too, Michelle Pfeiffer, my wife. <laughs> Look, I don't think I'm better than God, and I don't want him to spite me. It's just. The next time I win a TV award, I'm not going to thank Steven Bosco because he's a lousy crackhead. I'm going to thank one person that matters the most. <clears throat> uh, and the winner for the best comedy slash TV series is... What the hell? David E. Kelly. Yes! Yes, I won again! Oh yeah! Me again! Best TV show! Yes! Yes! I love game control here! Move, Lawrence! Hey! Move! Move! Hecklers, huh? Hello! Why would I be shot? Shut up! What? I don't deserve it at your hand! Damn it, look, look, everyone. Just, I mean, it's been a wild and crazy year, huh? Look, I just want to tell everyone, no man is responsible for all his own success. Why, I am in deep, deeply indebted to someone. You know, there's someone who's helped me through thick and thin ever since the Doogie Howser days. And I have failed to mention his or hers name. And you know, that special someone holds a very dear place in my heart. And his or her name is God. What? Thank you so much for your undying support, oh. everyone. I love you fans. Oh. Hey, 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 calm down, man, calm down. Come on, we're gonna have to go chill out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Everyone, me the narrator, out of lines, hanging out. You know, uh, I usually talk when this screen comes down. 
I heard a lot of people showed up tonight to see what I was going to say. <laughs> but I don't think I could do that rightfully without giving some credit to the narrators who went before. <laughs> First, I'd like you all to mourn the passing of one of my idols since childhood. The narrator of The Price is Right, Rod Roddy, who passed away last year at the age of 66. His death struck me in my heart like a dagger which I've been trying to do every night between the hours of 9 and 10 if my bodyguard, <laughs> my bodyguard Viper McGinnis tends to get in the way. He's got quite a few scars now. But uh, off topic, how about these gas prices, huh? <laughs> Uh, I figured out something else we could do. I figured we should make a machine that runs on Fritos. <laughs> only problem is that machine would only work as long as the machine that made Fritos worked. <laughs> well, you know, narrator's a tough job. You start thinking about things like that. You start thinking about taking other jobs. Took a job uh, in Japan last year. Uh, morning talk show, Mitsurugi in the morning. Uh, they had me play some guy named uh, Mr. Information, which, you know, for them is information song. Uh, I go over there, they like to get helpful little tidbits. They like me to pop up on the screen every now and then and tell them, when you are changing the tire on your car, please remember to loosen the lug nut. <laughs> or uh, the personal favorite was, never store credit cards or discs next to magnetic devices. <laughs> And of course, uh, you know, the ever popular, when driving in unsafe conditions, please be sure to alter your speed accordingly. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, there's an announcement coming up. Don't want to take any more of you gentlemen's time, and ladies too, so, uh, uh, oh yeah, we were watching a play. Okay. <laughs> After this commercial break, we'll find out. Will Rupert Murdoch succeed in his dastardly plans? Will David Kelly end up on top? Will Stephen Bochco and Tito ever work things out? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, trust me, I know. I did this show two nights ago. <laughs> Pay attention. There's a test later. TV shows because of those cheats on the internet. You know, they're downloading every episode of Ally McBeal just because they like it. 
You know, this can't keep up or else Callista Flockhart won't be able to pay for the food she wastes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> wow, supposedly TV shows are probably more figurative than, say, we sell films. How about you make the uh, celluloid, you know, gif? Okay, um... Wow, that makes perfect sense, Cher. I mean, the lineup is... I mean, it's always been a dream of mine to write for the movies, oh, but... Yeah. What can I write about that's more important than I, I feel? I don't care, I don't care. I don't care. Wow. All right. Let's see here. Deep Impact? No. Volcano? Mm -hmm. All right, I want something nice and scary. Make money. Yes. Make money for me. Okay. I okay. Don't, I don't want to work the streets no more. Shh. <laughs> Wait, what? Look. All right, let's see. Okay, you can't do aliens. Been done a million times. Sharks, cliched. Wicked. Yep. Uh, disaster films. You know, I want something nice and scary. I got it. Crocodiles. Crocodiles. I've never seen a movie with a crocodile in it. But David E. Kelly's gonna be the one to bring it straight to the screen. It should be scary. <laughs> scary like Bill Pullman's Get scary. Get off the floor. Get off the floor. Shh. Man versus beast, a battle. Nature, man, crocodile, beast, alien, roar. Oh man, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna have everything. Yeah! You're gonna move movie shit if you keep that up. <laughs> Outside. You know, uh, anyone see the graveyard to the right of the building coming in? Yeah. yeah, I was over there having a smoke and uh, I got attacked by zombies. You think that's funny? I swear, man, I'll put you in the trunk of my car. Yeah, well, managed to fight them off. They ripped my pants, though. Get a load of that. Look. Yep, it's coming fought him off though. All the way. Roll the 20, double damage. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's getting to be so it's so unsafe he can't even walk outside anymore without getting shot at or anything. What? <laughs> Some on my face? <laughs> oh, movie, right. Best movie ever, Lake Placid, Attack of the Suck Monster, go! <laughs>
was coming. I, would, don't, I was here two nights ago. <laughs> Everyone in this play is caught in a quantum loop. Only the narrator with his omniscient powers knows what's coming next. I know what's coming next. They're not freaking paying me for doing this a second time. I've had it. I'm gonna end it all right here. It's over. God, if you want me to continue living, give me a sign. <laughs> A jackknife. <laughs> well, guess I better get this over with. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I sincerely wish to apologize for what has to be one of the greatest cinematic mistakes in history. Especially want to apologize to any children. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. If, if the nightmares come, call me. <laughs> and any senior citizens, of course, it can be a little rough on the heart. I'm sorry. I'm 78 years old. <laughs> you wouldn't know it. They could do a lot with makeup. Well, anyway, I'm out of here. I'm quitting. I'm gonna stick with the job as information son. Uh, hope to see you guys around. You ever call, give, give Phil the narrator a call. Good night, guys. Hey! What? Any extra tips? <laughs> Always look both ways before crossing the street. <laughs> if signal is flashing all colors, stoplight is broken. <laughs> Like billboards are stock weird. Late class wasn't even so bad that it was good. It was so bad that it was just really, really bad. Yeah. Yeah. This is considered a film, and Alan it was fat. <laughs> I knew that TV warrior was nothing but a TV fraud. Yeah. They say you're only as good as your last project. I guess that means David E. Kelly completely sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. much. He's David E. Kelly's TV moron. <laughs> successful without me by your side. Hey, what did you ever do for me, Rupert Murdoch? I'm the one who wrote Alan McGill, not you! What did I do? <laughs> Remember when you got struck by lightning? Oh. When you were a little boy? Yeah. Little oh, baby. Little baby David Kelly? Yeah, I remember, of course. <laughs> okay, you said something uh, before you got struck. What was that? Well, the teachers and students were making fun of me. I was What? Like, oh! All right. You were crying like a little baby. You were like, yeah, you make me fun, man. Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah. All right, but what did you say? I said I, I'd sell my soul. Yeah. To the devil. <laughs> oh, 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 holy, holy. oh! Don't tell me that you're him. Owned. <laughs> I can't believe it. All this time, my successes, my riches. My Michelle, they were all given to me by Satan. He's right. I haven't done a thing in the world. I'm nobody. I'm a TV moron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna jump. Oh. No,
This racket. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, what? I didn't earn any of my work, Michelle. David, you've been saying this for a while. I told you, you earned it all. No, Michelle. Everyone was, everyone was right. I listened to all the wrong people. I should have listened to Stephen Bochco, my best friend. And now he's dead! Um, David, he's not dead. He's right there. Right down here, my pal. Stephen Bochco! Are you off the crack pipe? No, I'm still driving that crazy train. <laughs> All right, look. Michelle, when I was in high school, I sold my soul to Satan for my yeah. talents. Please, mister. You know that's not true. I did. That's how I did so well. Then when I thanked God at the TV awards, my pack with Satan was broken and like plastic was born. I'm a hack! Um, David? You were a hack all along. That's why I married you. That's why America loves you. Besides, the most popular TV shows are hack jobs anyways. Yeah, but there are two kinds of hack though. Giving the audience everything they want with no drive at all or just plain sucking. Now all I can do is suck. Just wait until you see Boston Public. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, David, but how can I believe any of this? Well, David! Hey, buddy. Uh, why don't you just jump off that ledge? I need that soul, like, pronto. <laughs> why don't you just jump down and I'll grab that? Hey, oh. I'm Michelle fighting for myself. Hey, there he is. There he is, that's him! Uh, okay, what's this about taking souls? Rupert Murdoch, that guy is Satan! Well, I saw that one coming a mile. David, we can help you defeat Lucifer. Who, though? It'd take a whole, whole army to defeat him. took over hell today. To Hollywood! To Hollywood! Uh, the pendulum 
swing is to the left. The pendulum swings to the right. David E. Kelly's a winner. Tito's $20 light. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, grapefruits. David! Uh-oh. The mistakes of Hollywood are redeemed. The martyr wait to be met. Say goodbye to the age of Satan. Let's all ride this crazy jet. To Hollywood. To Hollywood! And to David E. Kelly, the new king of Hollywood. All right, everybody, let's give America everything we've got. I heard that. Yeah! <laughs> Oh, by the way, uh, whatever happened to Hooperman? Barbara Blossom was way too annoying for that to have worked out. But John Ritter was magical. Are we gonna miss him? I said, we're gonna miss John Ritter. Yeah. John Ritter, for God's sake. Free company. I, I'm so, this show is dedicated to John Ritter, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Set out for freedom. Uh, John Ritter. John Ritter! <laughs> <laughs> John Ritter. <laughs> 